all of a sudden I heard, mm. like, and I thought Dad was talking. So I said, Dad, are you okay? And I went to get some water, and my friend, very assertive, she came to me and she said, your dad is having a stroke. I was holding dad there and she just, I just froze with dad and dad's whole right side just went to one side. She phoned the ambulance within two minutes. They was at the house and they was taking care of him. It was a frightening night in October when Tracy's father, Ronnie, who was visiting from England, collapsed in her home after suffering a stroke. And I felt my right side go. I just couldn't move my hand or my leg. And um, then I kind of lost, con well, I'm not saying lost consciousness, but I was in and out of consciousness. It was the first time in his 79 years that Ronnie Brimelow had ever been in hospital. Dr. Alex Henri Bargava was in emergency at Victoria General that night and says things went exactly as they should have. First of all, the ambulance had called the hospital en route, so people are already ready. What that means is that the triage nurse is expecting that an acute stroke is coming through. The people in the CT scanners are also expecting the same thing. And that's really important on a night where there was several traumas and patients requiring scans, that they understood that they had to fit in this very urgent stroke uh, in the middle of all these scans. Barbara Lover was also brought to emergency that day, but with very different symptoms. We were having breakfast, and just as we finished um, a breakfast cereal, I think, um, I noticed that Barbara's um, voice had started to slur a little. And um, I was particularly concerned when I found that there were, she simply couldn't get out certain words. And um, she then s stood up and there were signs of um, dizziness and disorientation and she was very, um, very upset. It was a bit like floating about in a fog. Everything seemed a little unreal. In Mrs. Lover's case, the diagnosis was the more subtle thing. And so the question there is, should we intervene or not? Um, and the reason was that she, she came in having had a stroke symptom that then resolved. We traditionally call that a transient ischemic attack. Uh, but it had lasted long enough that the emergency room had kept her for observation for further tests. And while she was having these further tests, she again had a reoccurrence of symptoms which mostly resolved. Neurologist Dr. Andrew Penn says in the past, patients with resolving symptoms like Barbara's would likely have been discharged with little more than an aspirin. But advances in imaging technology now allow us to see blood flow in the brain. What had happened with her is that she'd had a blockage quite far down the stream and the other blood vessels had kicked in and, and resurrected her blood flow so she looked okay but she was still in grave danger. In both cases, the patients were given a treatment called TPA. Uh, TPA is actually a naturally occurring protein which breaks up blood clot and it's now been developed so that it can be given by intravenous injection but in higher doses uh, and in some instances straight into the clot um, when catheters are put up into the brain. So it's a, it's a bl clot buster. Ronnie Brimelow was given TPA within 45 minutes of arriving at VGH, and his daughter says the results were astonishing. He still had no movement on mm -hmm. this side, and, um, and he was like, he couldn't speak, he couldn't. And it was with about an, an hour or so, he started moving his arms and his legs, and it was like a miracle. It was like, and even the nurses and the doctors, and you know, I, I was overwhelmed too. And, and he also got, all this came back as well. It was just wonderful. Dr. Penn says in a case like this, time is brain. When you can treat somebody very quickly, before there's too much damage to the brain, uh, if you open the clot, the, you know, the pipes are running again and, and the patient can recover completely. Dr. Henri Bargava says it is vital to have systems in place to ensure speedy access to CT scans if stroke is suspected. In stroke, that 30 minutes is potentially uh, millions of brain cells that have died additionally that we could have saved. When we mean quick, we, we don't just mean do it pretty quick, we mean literally every single minute counts. Barbara Lover spent some of her time in hospital drawing detailed sketches of her surroundings, a sure sign there are no lingering effects from her mini strokes. It's the first time I've got out of bed and got dressed and behaved like a normal person and um, it doesn't feel in any way strange. It's as if it was a, a dream. 
what happened to me. A nasty one, but it's, that's what it feels like. Dr. Penn says new Canadian guidelines require that anyone with symptoms of mini-strokes or TIAs undergo imaging tests to show blood flow in the brain. And in Barbara's case, the resulting treatment most likely saved her from a devastating stroke within six months. We know that uh, a third of people in this sort of circumstance um, who they don't get offered the blood the clot busting drug because they look too good they're improving and the people say oh they're fine <clears throat> a third of them have died or, or end up in a nursing home the impact of saving stroke is huge from both a human perspective and from a cost perspective um, we know on Vancouver Island alone the difference between our best year in terms of intervening with transient ischemic attack and our worst year is 2,500 days of hospital care, over $3 million just in acute care costs alone. And while we can measure the cost of hospital beds and ongoing care, it is harder to put a price on the human impact of preventing irreversible damage from a stroke. I thought I'd lost my dad of who he is. It might still have him, but I'd lost, you know, I still visualize that seeing my dad like that. and. And plus, like, my family is all in England and every, there's just me here, so, uh, so it was just a miracle when he started coming round.